Good evening, everybody. We're glad to get be here and be able to get started once again. It's a privilege to be back in God's house. Missing a lot of faces here tonight. Uh, Wayne is uh, going to see a new grandbaby that was just born. God helped the mother because that baby was uh, uh, almost as big as she was. Bless her heart. Uh, but uh, I'm, I know he's uh, happy and thrilled to, to be seeing um uh, Seeing that, seeing him. So, y'all just pray about that. Continue to remember mom and dad. Mama's still doing good. Y'all, most, as everybody knows, she got to come to church for two Sundays in a row. That's a big improvement. So, y'all just keep on praying for her. Um, we ask that you would uh, uh, pray for the family of Billy Jones. Y'all know that most of y'all know that she passed away. Uh, so, remember her. We're going to be having a memorial for her here. On the fifteenth, they already buried her. Uh, she had, had her funeral prearranged and didn't have a few didn't want a funeral. Uh, and what, so we're going to have a memorial uh, here on the fifteenth. they will just be mixed in with our church service that day. So it all be at the same time that morning. Um, yeah, y'all remember? I just found this out like right before. That's one of the reasons we're a little bit late getting started. Yes, um, a friend of mine died. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I didn't know he was in the bad shape that he's in. Uh, but uh, just remember his family, the Skidmore family. Uh, his name was Matt. Uh, uh, so, uh, but y'all remember him. And, uh, well, don't remember, you can't remember him anymore, but remember his family. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he ever made things right or not. I don't, I don't know. I hadn't seen him in a long time. We tried, worked on him quite a bit. Uh, so, uh, we'll see, uh, Lord willing, one of these days. Um, anybody remember David and Joyce? And I, I'm about to see if they've been able to make it back to church. Uh, Tracy ain't sick, is she, Brent? Yeah, she just didn't feel good. Okay, we'll remember her. And, uh, anybody else? What's my sister in law? She's been, she had uh, a lot of stroke the other night. Mm -hmm. Said it didn't do any damage on it. So far, it's that we're sweating. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's not doing too good right now. Remember Marilyn and Austin? Anybody else? My brother, sister, and brother, and child. Amen. Yes. Yes, here, we, we, where we are, we, I, you might not have got to hear, we're remembering mom and dad too, Joanne both on there, she put on there, remember Joanne, we are remembering her too, and uh, remember all the sick and all the lost, anybody else? All right. Um, hey, John, I mentioned too, there's been a couple things going on with some people's parents. Uh, that are sick at the, where she works. I don't remember the, na the names of the actual people, but God knows who they are, so remember them as well. So, well, all right. Well, Ken, if you just get to be back, you want to lead some prayer? Father, well, so thank you for another opportunity to be here, God. We're so thank you for the many blessings, God, that you give us throughout this time, Lord. We ask that you touch this church service, Lord. Touch Brother Joseph to bring us our message, God. We'll touch these prayer requests, Lord, we've spoken in and unspoken. That's the nursing home, so we're best with this. We love you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, we do an old hymn over here, and if I can get it going, maybe y'all don't hear what kids in, so I ain't no point in that. Uh, or we'll never grow old. I have heard the bubble land on the far away strain. Is a beautiful home of the soul built by Jesus on high.
Anybody heard any updates on Charlotte's grandson? I hadn't got to hear. I just know that he was in that car wreck and it was pretty bad and said that it severed one of the legs. But I don't know anything from there. So, uh, uh, also, Sierra said, asked us to remember the Woody family in prayer. So, found out another one of my rest home friends that I haven't been seeing in a while. I've been wondering what happened to him since we got to come back after COVID. Uh, but I found out that he died this year. Uh, do you remember Bucky? He was blind and he couldn't talk. Uh, but when we'd sing, uh, um, Jesus loves me, that was his song. And he'd do his best just to sing it with all he had. He used to be at Shepherd Hills and he got moved down the, the song for there for a while. But uh, I'd been wondering where he was at. I'm going to find out he's passed away. All right. Anyway, um, let's do one more song before we go to the special songs. Remember the Dodge, too. I think Timmy's been in the hospital with her problem. Has he? Yeah. Surprise, Connie hadn't contacted me. Yeah. She, you know, she's in twice now. Well, I think he was in there, I think, yesterday. We'll get it in a minute, buddy. We're going to in just a minute. We're going to do one more song, then we'll switch over and let you do one, okay? Huh? Okay. All right. Um, let's do this old song if I can. If I can sing good enough to do it. If you go big, that ain't the right key. That ain't gonna work. Let's do it a little different. If you go big, pull you off. There's no toilet paper.
Well, that's something. <laughs> Anybody else got a song out there? No, uh, that's okay. Huh? All right, that sounds good. Just hit play on carrying Jesus. Yeah. Are Sierra's you going to sign it? Are you going to sign it? No, Sierra's going to do that one. Well, let's see her sign it. I'll tell her that you said that. Yeah, tell her. <laughs> she wants to have some clothes. What are we doing now? I'm going to name everything. Okay. That's not going to name Jesus. I'll just pray for us. <laughs> That will be a, a great day when we uh, when there's no more heartaches. We get to go home with Jesus. No more tears and no more pain. It'll be a wonderful day. Hey! 
that God has been with us all the way. Y'all know it? Had to make about it. One more try. Um, also, remember in our prayer request, remember uh, uh, a friend of ours, uh, Josh Hollyfield. He had to, he's had a, a kidney stone. I think he said it was eight or nine millimeters, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been in there since kid, uh, since before Christmas, and it's been hurting him. And he's supposed to go today to see about getting it something done about it. So remember him. Remember Charles. Charles is on here. We miss him being here tonight. Uh, we love him, miss him. He's normally here. Uh, we're going to be in Job. In old Job. Start now. If my fingers will do the walking. Job chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. Before we, you know, I always like to pray and ask whatever God's got us, got for each one of us in this service, that we'll get it. So let us pray. Lord, we come before you as humble as we know how. So thankful for this opportunity to be here. It's a privilege and it's an honor. Lord, we just love you so much. Lord, as you were speaking to me on, on this thought tonight, you just really blessed my heart and I pray that that blessing will come forth here this evening as well. God, let there be nothing in our hearts to hinder. Lord, we beg that you'd forgive us of our sins, of our shortcomings, of our faults and our failures. Lord, we're not anything, but you are everything. We want you to know that we feel that way, and we know you know. But God, we just want to see you high and lifted up. Lord, touch us and help us all receive what it is you have for us in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 19.23. Starting off. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Y'all can be seated. Amen. We'll see how this works either with my glasses or without them. You know, as I was praying about what the what the, the speak y'all uh, this evening, Lord just began to put in my heart over and over. Redeemer. Redeemer. And the more I thought about Redeemer, the more he just began to bless my soul. And I I, I mean I, I can't even explain. The joy that began to fill my heart as I began to think about just the word Redeemer. You know, there's so much that can be said that I probably won't even begin to scratch the surface. But we're going to give it a shot a little bit this evening, okay? Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. Let's stop right there for a minute. Before we go any further, I want us to look at the word redeemer and establish what it means. You know, I feel like it's important. Y'all know that. I do a lot of stuff. I teach in a lot of ways sometimes. I feel it's important for us to understand more fully what words mean sometimes. Because I think we take words for granted and don't really ever dive into them. According to Webster's 1828, redeemer is one who redeems or ransoms. Well, that just gives us a little bit more information, right? Well, what is uh, redeem? It's to purchase back, to ransom, to liberate, or rescue from captivity or bondage, or from any obligation or liability to suffer to be forfeited by paying an equivalent as to redeem prisoners or captured goods to redeem a pledge. To repurchase what has been sold. To regain possession of a thing alienated by repaying the value of it to the possessor. To rescue, to recover, to deliver from. To compensate, 
to make amends for, to free by making atonement, to pay the penalty of, to save, to perform what has been promised, to make good by performance, to rescue and deliver from the bondage of sin and the penalties of God's uh, violated law by obedience and suffering in the place of the sinner or by doing and suffering that which is accepted in lieu of the sinner's obedience. And that ain't all of the definition of redeemer. That's just part of the definition of redeem. Then he said part of the, the definition was to redeem or ransom. So let's look at what ransom is. The money or price paid for the redemption of a prisoner or slave. Think about this, man. Or for the goods captured by an enemy that which uh, 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 procures the release of a prisoner or captive. Or the capture property and restores one to liberty and the other to the original owner. In law, a sum paid for the pardon of some great offense and the discharge of the offender or a, a fine paid in lieu of corporal punishment. The price paid for a forfeited life. Think about that. The price paid for a forfeited life or delivery or release from capital punishment. The price paid for procuring the pardon of sins and redemption of the sinner from punishment. Wow. That, there's a lot to being a redeemer when you consider what it means to redeem and to ransom. You know, there's still much more in both of these definitions that I didn't write down that describes what ransom is and what redeem is. Most of y'all, if y'all know what ransom is, y'all think of somebody getting kidnapped then the ransom money is what's paid, right? It does cover that. Think about it. You know, the words redeemer, redeem, ransom work together in such a way. But if you want to break it down, basically if you want to know what a redeemer is, Think about it. It's going to take me a minute to get all this together that it's talking about. It's one who uh, redeems or ransoms. That means that a redeemer is one who purchases back and liberates and rescues from captivity or bondage or obligation, uh, buys back what has been sold or stolen, one who delivers and makes amends taking away the liability uh, to suffer of the one who was due, one who makes atonement and pays the penalty, who uh, one who saves and performs that which they said they would, to rescue and deliver from the bondage of sin by taking the sinner's place, thereby paying the price for redemption in order to set the bound free. There's a lot to being a redeemer, isn't there? Job said there that I know that my Redeemer lives. What do you think Job had to be redeemed out of? He's in the middle of sorrows. He's in the middle of troubles and everything coming against him. And in the middle of all this coming on, he says, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my God is alive. He says, I know I'm going to see it one of these days. Bless God. You know, that's not even scratching the surface what we said of what a redeemer really is. But, uh, but I want to ask you this. Who is this redeemer? You know, Psalms 19 and 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Isaiah 44 and 24 says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Galatians tells us in 3 and 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed. Cursed is everyone that hang upon a tree. Christ has 
redeemed us. Titus told us in Titus 2, 13 and 14 said, Looking for that blessed hope, y'all know this, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Bless God. Amen. Think about it. So who is our Redeemer? Oh, come on, people. Who's the Redeemer? Jesus. Say it with a little bit more feeling. Jesus. Who is it that has redeemed you? Jesus. Who is it that has paid the price of your sin? Yes. Who is it that has done it so that you wouldn't have to die and go to hell if you would accept what He's doing? Jesus. Amen. Think about it. Amen. Think about this. Kenneth, won't you turn over, if you would, to Matthew 20, 28. Hey, John, well, if you would, turn over to 1 Timothy 2 and 6. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but it just excites me. You there? Yeah, go ahead and read it. Matthew 20, 28. 20 and 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for me. What? Read it again. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for me. This is Jesus speaking. He said, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give His life a ransom for many. That means that He became the payment when He says that he, He's our Redeemer and He became the ransom. He gave Himself a payment come knowing that He was giving Himself a payment for our ransom. Go ahead, Adrian. 1 Timothy 2 and 6. You're doing good, son. You're doing good. Elias is reading for those out there that can't hear him. Uh, Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen. Who did? Jesus. Jesus did. So if there's a Redeemer, right, man, we all got a little bit of end to this. I know I get excited about it. If there's a Redeemer, then there is, has to be that which is redeemed. Right? 1 Peter 1, 18 through 21. Anybody want to take me up on reading that or y'all want me to read it? Huh? Ashley, the chemist pointing at Ashley. Ashley, you want to read it? All right. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 21. All right, hold on right there. You wasn't redeemed with what? Corruptible things such as silver and gold. Why were you not redeemed with those things? Anybody know? Because, huh? What? Y'all gonna have to speak up because I can't hear you. Right, what else? That's true, what else? Ain't they're corruptible? Right. Silver and gold, corruptible. We're not redeemed with them. They're not pure enough. The blood of lambs could not buy our pardon. It took a perfect sacrifice, right? A pure fact of sacrifice. It took a blood atonement. Go ahead. From your vain conversation, which is 
ancestors, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. What? What redeemed us? Precious blood. There you go. Go ahead. I'm sorry. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. All the way through 21. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. All right, stop right there. I've I've got to keep interrupting you. When did Christ know he was going to be our Redeemer and it was going to take his life? It tells you right there. Before the foundation of the world. Go ahead, Ashley. That was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him to up from the dead. And gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Did all this that you might be drawn to who? God. How about that? All right. How about Psalms 107 and 2? Somebody want to read that one? I got people turning. That's a good sound. I like when people get in their Bibles and they turn those pages. This is one y'all probably know by heart when you get there and see it. All right, go ahead and read it. You said 102? Yeah, 107 too. 107 too. Uh, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. All right. If somebody has redeemed you, if you were taken hostage, and somebody paid your ransom and you got to go. They didn't kill you. You come out unscarred. You were set free. Don't you think you'd be happy? Don't you think you'd be humble? Don't you think you'd be just so grateful? Well, how do you think you would feel if you found out that that ransom that had to be paid was that other person's life? We'll set your child free, but we're going to kill you to do it. Well, they let you go and then you find out that other person's gone, dead, gave their life so that you could say, how would you feel? Would you feel grateful? Would you feel thankful? Would you feel ashamed? Would you feel a little weird a little bit about it? That, hey, why? You might want to know why. Why I want to get understanding. How do you feel about it being saved? Understanding that when we went over what a redeemer is and what he does, how he pays, how he puts himself in your place, when he became the ransom, as the Bible says, he became the payment. He freely gave his body to the smiters. He freely died to death upon the cross in order to bring you salvation, to save you, as the definition says. Part of the definition of to redeem is to save, to deliver you, to bring you forth from the bondage of sin, from he who had stolen you. Amen. He gave his self so that you might be set free. When we consider all that God has done to be our Redeemer, we ought to have something to rejoice about. We ought to have something to be thankful about. We ought to have something to be happy about. We ought to be thankful for every chance we get to, to testify. Every chance we get to tell somebody about Jesus. Every time we get to come through those doors of the church. Every time we can do anything to bring glory to Him because He has done so much for us. He paid a debt that we couldn't pay. Amen. We had formed chains over our soul. We had indebted ourselves to Satan. But then here comes Jesus who had the power, who had the price that could be paid. There's no gold. There's no silver. I can't get the word out tonight. That could have purchased your salvation. There's no time in purgatory that can bring you relief. There's only one thing that can bring you any hope, and it's the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ who was willing to lay it down so that yours wouldn't have to be paid. Amen. Talk about an attorney. 
He's more than an attorney. He's more than a defense lawyer, Liz. Amen. He became our sin. He became our victory. He took our place and took the beating. I'm going to tell you, I ain't man enough to endure the beating that he took. I ain't got enough love in me to show the love that he showed. Can you say you do? I had to say, Rosie, after they hit me so many times, I might have smarted a few things off to them. Well, you just sent me pretty Let me get a hold of you and fight me like something like that. But Jesus opened not his mouth. Why did his anger not break loose, Aaron? Why did he not get frustrated and, and, and just tear into them? Why did he not fight back? Because he loved you that much. Liz, he was prepared to go all the way. And if he knew for thousands of years that this was going to take place. How many of you going to a doctor get worked up about it? If you know for a couple of weeks before you go, your blood pressure may be through the roof before you get there, right? And you're already got in your mind what's going to happen. But still you prepared for it and you expect it. Jesus prepared for it. That don't mean that his flesh wanted to die. I've told y'all many times, and we're getting we're getting closer to that in the Bible study. That when he was praying in the garden, he come back and found him asleep, and he said, Could you not pray with me one hour? Goes in all that, and he says, The the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing, or the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, whichever way we say it. He's the flesh didn't want to die. The spirit, his spirit was ready to be offered to do what was needed to be done. But the flesh wasn't ready. But he overcome the power of the flesh. So that he might bring you victory. What kind of person is that? What kind of love is that? It's a love greater than any. It's a person greater than any. And he did it all because he loves us. The best way that I can explain it is I actually think I heard an old preacher say this one time. It's like somebody has hawked something at a pawn shop. And it's been sitting there it's been sitting there so long to the point that maybe the pawn shop owner, owner don't even think nothing about it. It's just left upon the shelf. Maybe a couple of people have come by and inquired on it. Been like, how much is that? Oh, it's not worth that. I'm not going to pay it. The pawn shop owner just says, well, just sit there and ain't eating nothing. Have I ever heard that expression before? And then all of a sudden, one day, one person comes in and says, I want that. Oh, you can't afford that. Well, tell me how much it is. I want it. It's more than you could have paid. Tell me how much it is. I'm willing to pay it. I'll take it. There's no way you can afford it. The price is too great. I can pay it. Give it to me. This will cost your life. So. So. That's the best way you can look at it. It cost him everything. But he did it all for you. Now I don't know if you're getting anything out of this. But the more I think about it. The more I think about what Jesus had to go through. In order to do this. They, they were not careful in using these words. You understand that? To describe God. They were not careful in using these words. To describe Jesus. They were not careful in using these words. There was a reason these particular words were used. Despite what anybody may say, we were bound. And we were headed straight for hell. Y'all believe that? Do you? Because you say, I don't believe that if you don't believe that there's a hell that you can be saved. You want me to say that again? Yeah. I don't believe that if you don't believe there's a hell that you can be saved. Can you say it again, please? <laughs> I've done it said it twice. But I'll say it a third time. My feelings is, if you don't believe there's a hell, you're not saved. Because, because, if you don't believe there's something to be saved from, then how can you be saved? 
They like me going up to Kenneth and saying, uh, going by and saying, jump back, Kenneth, and then me just punching air and fighting it off and saying, okay, I just saved your life. Well, what was that, man? Oh, you didn't see that monster that was standing there? Now, I didn't see nothing. That's all right. Right? You ain't going to believe me because you don't see it, right? You want to think something's wrong with him? Did he take some kind of medication? Is he tripping out? But when it comes to salvation, you ain't seen hell. But if you've been saved, you won't ever have to see. Amen. 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 Do you want to see hell? I've heard people say, oh, if I could just see this. If I could just do this. You can do what you want to. I'm not going to tempt the Lord my God. I'm thankful for what He's offered. He's offered me a free way out. He's done paid. He's done paid it, y'all. No longer am I drowning and sinking and seeing sea. I got my head away above the waters. Right? I can't swim or flip. But I've got a hold of the one who has lifted me up. By the waters. He redeemed me. He ransomed me. He saved me. Bless God. Think about who He is. He liberated me. Liberated me. You know, I've heard people say, they talk about uh, uh, being a servant means that you're a slave to God. That's not what the definition, when you really get into it in the Bible, being God's servant is talking about. When you study what God done, He has relieved us from the bondage of slavery. Our service to God is in joy, not in chains and bondage, but in dedication of love and truth. He liberated us. Bless God, He fought the revolution for us that we could be set free. He paid more than the equivalent. Amen. He took me and brought me to a, a much better place. And I just can't praise him enough. Can you? I believe old Joe knew that one day his sorrows were going to be over, even if it was when he was dead. But he knew that one day he would at least see God. How do you feel about it? You know, all the troubles in this life are going to come. But that don't affect our, don't, that don't affect our salvation. That don't affect what God has done for us. Just because we're sick, because we're dying, because we're suffering, you think that means that we don't have salvation? We wasn't promised that disease wouldn't come. We're living in a world that's full of sin. The body, this blood, has been cursed. Ever since the devil created it and Adam and them took part of it. I mean, started that. Well, you know, we talked about some of that in, uh, in Sunday school, uh, Sunday morning. The Bible says God created all things, didn't He? He created the devil. He created the light. He created the darkness. He created goodness and the devil. He brought forth the devil. He brought forth sin. So you got to think about that. Nothing was created. The Bible says nothing was created without Him. Sin came because of bad choices. But the choice was made and given. Why was the choice given? Free will. Free will. We talked about it Sunday morning. It's because of free will. Because if God just gave you only good choices and that's all you had to choose from, and if He was all you ever had to choose from, then there would never be a true love. Because there would be nothing to tempt to pull away. You understand? So in order to have true love and to tr have true free will, it all goes back to love. It all goes back to uh, God's love for you. In order for us to have free will, we had to have a choice. In order for us to have real love, we had to have a choice. We had to choose to receive God and love Him or to reject God and love another. Does that make sense? We went a lot better the description of it on Sunday morning talking about it. But in all of that, God knowing who would reject Him, He still had the plan of salvation. We almost didn't get it. 
We almost didn't get it. God looked down and saw that this world was full of evil. He saw that the imaginations of man's heart were continually evil. And he decided he was going to send a flood. Then all of a sudden, Noah found grace in his eyes. It hadn't been from one being obedient. God was to the point, they're just not worth my son. But there was one. And because of that one, Kim, he knew that if he gave Noah forgiveness and he gave Noah the strength to build the ark and let Noah take his family out, do you think Noah's sons were, uh, were obedient followers of God? I'm not so sure. you got to think about what happened after the ark was uh, uh, come upon dry land and what, how sin began to spread and uh, different things. They said some of it come through their wives, but a lot of it had to come through the men as well. So think about it. But because of Noah, it said because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You can think about that. Because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, God let the plan of salvation go forth. Because one was obedient to God, millions have been free and set at liberty. You say one can't do anything? No, it didn't. You know, I normally say what Jesus did. He was one, and everybody says, well, he was God. Yeah, he was God in the flesh. And, you know, uh, in the flesh, he still had to battle weaknesses and stuff and, and overcome them. But if you want to see one in the Bible that could have made a difference, that's Noah. If Noah had decided to be like everybody else, if he decided to go hang with the crowd, get drunk with them, partake in their sins, then we wouldn't be here. Look at Moses. If Moses hadn't been obedient to God, and even more, more so than just obedient, he was humble. Many, several times God wanted to destroy Israel. And he said, I will, I'll just wipe them off. And I'll start a new people with you, Moses. But God, uh, Moses pleaded with God and begged him for mercy and spoke with God. If it hadn't been for obedient people, we wouldn't have the opportunities we have today. I'm so thankful that we have somebody who cares for us, who loves us in the way that God loves us. When you read about, I wish I would look up the word Redeemer in, in, the, in the concordance or in the, uh, yeah, concordance. And just see how many times it's in there and go to those scriptures and look up where Redeemer is used and where Redeem is used in the Bible. It will bless your heart. You find out that uh, Abraham had a Redeemer, had a Redeemer. Jacob had a Redeemer that they talked about. You find out about uh, uh, David's Redeemer. And as you keep on studying and pressing on, it'll bring you right back to the New Testament. And you find out about your Redeemer. The suffering, the love, the grace that He's shown to you. I ain't got a lot more to say than that. I just, the Lord began to just speak to my heart about the Redeemer, the Redeemer, the Redeemer. It's a word that you can't get out of your mind once you get thinking about it. Redeemer, Redeemer, Redeemer. What's, what is it? Redeemer, Redeemer, Redeemer. It's what He did. It's who he is. Amen. Not only uh, it, did he leave us, he didn't just leave us hanging, he's still there. Caring about us. He was able to overcome it. Though he gave his life, Lisa, he was able to reclaim his life. He was able to redeem his life. That was given by the Father. I can't even get started on all that tonight. What does the Redeemer mean to you? Can you say you know, used to people would shout at the mention of his name. Used to people would give me itching at the chance to stand up and testify. Well, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you how he set me free. Let me tell you how I used to be a drunk. How I used to be a drug addict. Or how I used to be whatever. But God made a difference. He redeemed me. He took my sins. He washed me clean. And He set me free. Amen. 
The Bible says that the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. Amen. Where is that cry going? Where is that shout going? Where is that love for Him going? We need to get back to it. The devil's wearing us out. We ought to be wearing him out, but he's wearing us out. We're getting exhausted. We're getting tired. It becomes so the, uh, uh, such a chore to be able to go to God's house. It becomes such a chore to be able to lift up his name. It shouldn't be a chore. It should be a joy. It shouldn't be a weakness. It should be a strength. We shouldn't be ashamed. Let them be ashamed. Don't be ashamed for what God has done for you. Don't be ashamed to lift up His name. Don't be ashamed to pray. Don't be ashamed of the blood. They won't say, oh, that's archaic. You bet you shouldn't use that. That's bad. They show blood in all these horror movies. They show these people getting ripped apart with all this stuff going on. And they say that the, the blood shed of Jesus Christ that freely washes away sin is too much for them to handle. But the blood's supposed to be running down the streets and, and going every which way. That's not bad. Shame on you, world. Shame on you, Hollywood. And shame on you, churches. If you can't celebrate the blood of Christ and what He did. Amen. 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 Let us bow our heads. Lord, we come before you as humbly as we know how. So thankful for who you are and thankful that you are our Redeemer. You're not only our Redeemer, but you're our Savior. You're our rock. You're our family. You're our friend. You're our shelter in the time of storm. You're our defense in the time of trouble. You are our shield. God, you are our sword. And you are our strength. Lord, you are our wisdom. Lord, you are our counselor. Lord, and you are wonderful. And we love you. These words don't even begin to describe who you are. And what you've done and what you are doing right now. God, forgive us for not lifting you up the way you were worthy of. God, and search our hearts and help us see how we can do better. Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts watching and those assembled here. Lord, and I just pray that you would draw every single one of us closer unto you. Because you are worthy to be honored. And you are worthy to be loved. You are worthy to be respected. God, you are worthy of it all because of who you are and what you have done for us. God, touch us and help us be all that you'd have us to be in thy name. We pray. Amen. Amen. I believe that we should always do a, a song of a, of a we're, uh, off the call before we close out. And if any of y'all's got a prayer, pray and pray. If you might not have another chance, you don't ever know. Well, I'm not home, and he go tree. I'm nothing on oh, my home. I've made mistakes, I've often failed Just common flesh and bone But I'll prove one day just why I say I'm a, a special kind When he was on that cross Well, I was on Oh, 
blood was on his face. Crown of thorns was on his head. His blood came streaming down his cheek, stained his robe a crimson ring. Though his eyes were on the crowd that day, I know he looked ahead in time. Cause when he was on that cross, thank God I was on his mind. And he knew me, yet he loved me. He whose glory remains the heaven child. touched each heart. You know, the burden they're on, the desire thereof. God, we just ask that you would touch and never need as only you can do. Lord, you are our redeemer. You are our helper. Lord, and most of all, you are our, our comforter, our, our savior, our friend. God, you told the disciples that no longer do you call them servants. You said, I call you friends. Lord, help us all to have that kind of relationship with you. Lord, help us have that kind of trust and love, God, that only we can have in you. Lord, we aren't anything, but we're so thankful that when you was on that cross that you thought of us. Lord, that you loved us when nobody else could. Lord, you knew our failures. You knew how far we would go, how low we would sink. But you still chose to go on anyway. Blessed is thy name. Precious is thy will. Lord, And we just give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight? Amen. Now, y'all don't sound real convincing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad because he loves you. Bye -bye, <laughs> there ain't nobody up there living from the south. Hey. I know you was. I said there ain't nobody up there to pose the camera off yet. Your mom's coming up. Bye-bye. <laughs> we appreciate everybody joining us this evening. We love y'all. I know the message wasn't long, but it's just to the point. I want you to think about the Redeemer. I want you to think about what all it takes to be a Redeemer. Nobody else could be the Redeemer because nobody had the qualifications to be able to stand up and be who he was and who he is. Amen. We love y'all. Lord willing, we'll be back on here Sunday morning at 7 o'clock. God bless.